Yeah, you have to turn in 55,000 NFTs in order for the servers to unlock the new raid. Wow, I can't wait for the future of gaming. Holy shit. How can so many people be so stupid? So gentlemen, uh, happy new year, number one. And number two, uh, it's not gonna be a happy new year. And if it is, you're gonna have to pay for it in NFTs. Today, or yesterday or so, uh, there was an announcement that came from the president of Square Enix talking about NFTs and video games and their position on such a thing. Now, I know everybody wants to uh, be the first person they want to be the first innovator in this space so they can, in 10 years from now, look down on all the plebs on their yacht full of models and cocaine and think to themselves, they're not as smart as I am. And that's the fantasy that the metaverse and the NFTs are trying to sell you. And today, I'd like to look at that fantasy and see how it's manifested itself today in Square Enix. So, this is the, uh, the tweet right here. Uh, man couldn't say Happy New Year without also saying, here's how I plan to ruin video games in 2022. So, uh, this has been an ongoing thing. NFTs and video games have been the new selling point in order to garner the attention of naive crypto bros into buying into this product that they don't actually own because the intellectual property rights and resale rights are still primarily owned by the developer. So let's go ahead and we're going to read this, uh, this article here that was written. I would like to begin by wishing everyone a happy new year. The metaverse was a hot topic in 2021, inspiring lively global conversation about what the metaverse is and, and about what sort of business opportunities it presents. And number one, this is the question that the purchaser, that the consumer asks. Uh, music's not short, let me turn it down. What is the metaverse is the question the consumer asks. And what sort of business opportunities it presents is what the people that care about the metaverse are asking. Because I actually don't think that the metaverse is something that people are asking for. I think that you, your brother, your friend, the people you went to high school with, those people aren't really talking a whole lot about the metaverse. They're not thinking about it. The main people that are pushing the idea of a metaverse are the corporate overlords that are looking to sequester and segment away more autonomy of your personal life away from you and into the realm that they can control that is now being called the metaverse. Do not fall victim to, uh, to, to this language. Do not be taken advantage of. Uh, this is something that is being pushed from the top down. This is something that many people I don't think give a fuck about. And I think that the only reason why it's being promoted so heavily is through these companies who are trying to astroturf interest through it by giving people the idea that they can actually make a lot of money off of it in the same way that somebody could invest in Google in 2000 or Amazon whenever it was still a bookstore. This is the fantasy that's being sold with the metaverse. This is the fantasy that's being sold with a lot of these different things. It's the true American dream not to work hard and get rich, but just get rich. And the best thing about this is that the getting rich part is done through being intelligent. It's not because you just got lucky and won the lottery. It's not because you uh, inherited a bunch of money. It's because your intelligence, the fact that you are smart and you can see the trends, that's why you made a lot of money. So not only are you richer than everybody else, but you're smarter than they are too. And that is the fantasy that they hope that you're gonna buy into with the metaverse. That's what they're trying to do. They're trying to get you to buy into a fantasy, to buy into a world that you, you wrongly believe that you have control over. Okay, it's been three or four minutes for the video and we're not even through the first sentence. So let's go ahead and keep going. Uh, against this backdrop, Facebook changed its name in October to Meta, serving as evidence that the concept is not a mere buzzword, but here to stay. Uh, Metaverse garnered so much attention that 2021 was dubbed the Metaverse Year. Did you guys get the census on voting on what year it was? Who here got the Who here got the census on that? Was it only me? Because I, I remember I got the census and it was like, all right, 2021 is it the 
COVID year volume two, metaverse year, um, Biden year, let's go Brandon year, right? And you get a A, B, C, D, and you get to pick the one. Uh, thank God, uh, you know, I picked COVID round two. Uh, this is fucking ridiculous. It's been dubbed the metaverse here. So the reason why this language is being used here is because the language then portrays who is shooting bullshit. There, we're gonna go over here. Uh, the reason why they're calling it the metaverse year and the reason why they're using this language here is because they want to create the illusion. They want to create the fantasy that this is actually an extremely popular thing. Nobody called it the metaverse year. Nobody gives a fuck about it. The metaverse isn't even in the top 10 most important things that happened this year. And the idea of it has been existing forever that people have just used digitally online as different uh, different terms and different worlds, right? The metaverse idea is just a, uh, it's just a, a new term that's being used for it. Nobody fucking decided this. Nobody agreed on this. Nobody thinks this is true, except for the people that want to sell you to the fantasy that it is. Keep that in mind. I attribute this large part in advances to extended reality technology. I, can tr I, I would say I attribute a large part of it, the entire almost part of it, due to n number one, uh, naive people that think that they're going to make a lot of money by being smart, by buying into something that they don't even own. And then the other part of the people are just different people that want to make money off of you. The increasing prevalence of the cloud and 5G. Oh right, the cloud. Cloud gaming, how's that going? Probably just about as well as the metaverse will. More sophisticated blockchain technology and other technological evolutions that have taken a variety of fields over the past several years. This is because these advances are giving rise to services that fall under the metaverse umbrella. Thank God. The metaverse will likely see a meaningful transition to a business phase in 2022, with a wide range of services appearing on the scene. As this abstract concept begins to take concrete shape in the form of product and service offerings, I'm hoping that it will bring about changes that have more substantial impact on our business as well. So this is really why I don't think the metaverse is going to particularly go anywhere and it's not really going to uh, to do anything. It's because of uh, uh, of this word here. Where Where is it that I see it? Maybe I just thought it in my head. Um, yeah, let's just look at service offerings. What really is a service offering? Uh, service offering is value. Uh, what value can the metaverse provide you, the consumer? How does this help you, the individual? And the answer is that it doesn't. It doesn't help you. It helps them. And it helps people that think that they're going to make a lot of money. It's like people that go to California to pan for gold. Maybe I'll strike it rich. Well, guess what? Most of them didn't. And if you're watching this video, you probably won't either. It's the way it goes. Good opportunity to scam people though, not that I will. You'll be left behind. And this is what I hear a lot. You said, you're so stupid. Y-O-U-R, you're so stupid. Listen, you don't even know English. What makes you think that you understand the direction of technology? You don't. You're being sold a fantasy that you're smarter than everybody else. And the reason that you're smarter than everybody else is you have a higher understanding of something that you apparently don't even have good reading comprehension of. This is a fantasy that you're being sold and you're being given because it's taking advantage of your sense that you're smarter, your sense that you are meant for more than what you have. You're meant for more than what you've worked towards. This is why you're doing it. It, it. It's buying into your insecurities. It's buying into your ego. And it's buying into that feeling in the back of your head that you believe that you're meant for something greater, even though you've never done anything to make somebody actually believe that, except for you and maybe also your mom all the time. And this is what I'm saying before. You'll be left behind. Oh, well, you need to know more about it. All of these things, all of this language, compare this with the way people talk about cults. The language, the vocabulary, and everything else. If you had a Venn diagram for that, it would just be one circle. I understand that there are values that can be created with NFTs and with blockchain technology, absolutely. But to think that pictures of monkeys and NFTs sold by a company that you don't even own the copyright to are one of them is naive. 
and you're being taken advantage of. NFTs aren't just pictures, idiot. Well, it doesn't really matter what they are whenever you don't really own them, does it? See, I understand that there's a lot of people out there who, yeah, you just don't get it. And this is what I always hear. This is what I always get is that you just don't know enough. And the reason why people say that is they falsely believe that if you buy into the same propaganda that they do, that you will somehow come to the same conclusion, which is not true. There are some people that read the Bible and they become a nun or they become a priest. And there's other people that read the Bible and they put it down and they laugh. There's a chance and a possibility that what you believe in is actually just bullshit. If you are not willing to question your own ideas and you're not willing to think that maybe I could be wrong, then you'll be taken advantage of by somebody else who has. Any good idea can stand the test of criticism. And the one thing that I've learned with a lot of this stuff is that almost all criticism of it is attributed to a lack of knowledge. And one thing that I've always seen is that the actual arguments themselves are not addressed, especially with the metaverse. Anyone who has actual assets, I have ZFT. You own a fancy playing video games, making millions. You're attached to other people uh, pursuing a very real dream. You're exactly right. And that's why the being a streamer or a YouTuber or something like that is the most popular uh, thing that kids want to be nowadays. Uh, the top job that kids want to be, it's not an astronaut. It's not a lawyer. It's not a doctor. Uh, it's a YouTuber. It's a video game streamer. It's an online influencer. Wow, I wonder what that's going to do to our culture in 50 years. I'm sure it won't be good. Let's keep reading the rest of the topic here, okay? Not in Asia. Yeah, in China, number one, number two are like astronaut and, uh, and lawyer, I'm pretty sure, something like that. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, it, it's very dangerous. And again, it's people want to uh, money for nothing and, uh, and chicks for free. That's, again, the American dream. Another term that gained quick currency in 2021 was NFT or non-fungible token. The advent of NFTs using blockchain technology significantly increased the liquidity of digital goods, enabling the trading of a variety of such goods at high prices and sparking conversations the world over. Uh, I see 2021 not only as metaverse year one, but also as NFTs year one. Uh, given that it, uh, it was a year in which NFTs were met with a great deal of enthusiasm by rapidly expanding user base. However, we uh, observe examples here uh, and overheard uh, of the overheated trading in NFT digital goods with somewhat speculative overtones, regardless of the observed value of the content provided. Uh, this obviously is not an ideal situation, but I expect to see an eventual right sizing in digital goods deals as they become more commonplace among the general public. With the value of each available content corrected, their true estimated worth. So he's saying that basically the market is inflated right now, which is true. There's a lot of um, uh, there's a lot of uh, like business jargon here, but this is effectively what he's saying. And I look to them to become as familiar as dealings with uh, physical goods. I'd like to ask you all a question, and let's play a percentage game. How many people do you think are investing and buying NFTs right now because they believe in them? And how many people do you think are investing and buying in NFTs right now because they can think they sell they will sell that NFT at a higher a higher price at a later date? It has nothing to do, in my opinion, I think like yes, 0.1% to 99.9%. .9%. Almost every single person that is buying these NFTs and trying to resell them and hype them up, all they're looking for is someone dumber than they are that they can sell it to that person instead. And again, I know that there are going to be some people that are a little bit more rational who are going to listen to what I say and say, wait, Asmund, I actually think that the blockchain technology and NFTs can have value. And I think that you're right. But I don't think that value is a JPEG. It's artificial digital scarcity. In other words, it's bullshit. Let's go back over here. Uh, and I look for them to become as familiar as dealings with physical goods. To address these changes in our business environment, the medium-term business strategy that we unveiled in May 2020 identified AI, the cloud, and blockchain games as new domains. Do you know why uh, these companies want to use the cloud, by the way? It, because it, uh, it, it transfers ownership of video games and of products away from the consumer. Uh, it once again removes your autonomy. It once again removes your ownership of what you have 
and it takes it away from you and it turns it into just another license. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I'm a little bit sick of owning a license to use something whenever 20 years ago, I just bought the thing outright. I'm sick of it. I'm tired of it. And I'll tell you one thing is I think I'm not the only person because whenever I look at all these comments and ever I read, whenever I read all of this stuff, this is what real people are saying and they are fucking sick and tired of it too. We all are. And that's why whenever an article comes out like this or a statement comes out like this, of course it's going to attract the attention of the naive, the FOMO buyers, people that they go and they buy. Uh, you probably listen to these same people 20 years ago talk about how they're buying Beanie Babies. And now they're sitting in their closet uh, collecting dust. You're inside your own bubble. Sure. The reality is that they're not real. That's the reality is that they're not real. Your mounts have NFT value. No, they don't. <laughs> you're, you're so stupid. They don't. They, they absolutely don't because the game controls the way that you can transfer them and use them to other people. They control the entire framework of the system. It doesn't matter if you're holding on to the receipt whenever they tell you that you can't get a refund. Think, think about it for just a few seconds. Is it value 100% subjective? Let me give you a few examples. So if I can go to the, uh, well, you have the Mona Lisa, right? Extremely valuable. There's only one of them. Everybody knows the Mona Lisa is special and important and valuable. Go down to your local thrift store and look at your t-shirts and find the t-shirts for um, Pastor Robinson's Baptist Revival Group 2017. And you're gonna see that that shirt, there's probably only 10 of them in the whole world and it's on the dollar rack. Just because something is rare, just because something is uncommon or there is scarcity for it, does not mean that it has value. Just because something has Scarcity does not create value. The value is circumstantial. It needs to have a function and a purpose or some form of impact that it's made. JPEGs do none of that. Then it wouldn't be considered rare. Yeah, then it would not, uh, all value is circumstantial. Uh, you're right. And to somebody out there, that shirt is probably worth $1,000. You're definitely right. But it's not worth $1,000 overall. And that's what I'm saying before. And this is all, it's all FOMO, man. The fear of missing out. The fear of not being the person that bought into it early. The fear of not being the guy that invested in Bitcoin in 2012. Invincible though? Theoretically, this seems like a good idea. Theoretically, without actually thinking about it, it seems like a great idea. However, let's use the example of Invincible and let's talk about this. Do you own the intellectual property? No. Do you own all of the different autonomy? Yo, Asmund Gold. Asmund Gold. Gold. What? You know you're on stream. Come on. Just say what you're going to say. Asmund Gold. God, I hate this fucking guy. Asmund Gold. Shut up. We're good, guys. Devices are also making performance gains. Uh, as these trends uh, continue, I believe that content that we provide will become more accessible, making it more likely that our consumers will discover enjoyment as we gain new touch points with them. Touch points. You know what they're touching? Does anybody know what they're touching? Guess what they're touching? It's called your wallet. They're touching your fucking wallet. Listen and pay attention to vocabulary like this. Leveraging cloud technologies is extremely effective as a means of making our content and services uniformly available and as a catalyst for creating new forms of excitement that expand upon the content development capabilities for which we are known. As such, we will be making ample investments in the cloud space. I think cloud gaming probably has some degree of, uh, of relevance, but it's just not really there yet in terms of the technology. Uh, so like, what the fuck does that even mean? What this means here is extremely effective is making our content sales uni uniformly available. What they mean by uniformly available is that they completely control the way that it's available. Again, these are improvements that, be that are being made without the consumer's consent and without the consumer's approval. Yeah, th th these are things, th this, is, this is not being done with the best interest of you, the player in mind. Lastly is blockchain games. 
be they single player or online games, games have traditionally involved uh, a unidirectional flow whereby creators such as ourselves provide a game to the consumers and play them. By contrast, blockchain games, which have emerged from their infancy and at this very moment are entering a growth phase. The, the growth phase that blockchain games are having is because venture capitalists and like angel investors are investing into every single one of them, hoping that eventually one of them will turn out to be the game that mints the next Bitcoin. Yeah, this is not, this is artificial. It, it, it's completely artificial. I can't believe so many people can be so stupid. It's unbelievable, man. It's speculative. Yeah, it's completely speculative. Exactly. It's dot com hype. I, it's not... A, the thing is, y you would say it's a bubble, but it's like everybody knows it's a bubble, so it's not a bubble. It's just a fever dream. Let's read the rest of it. Why can't you believe it? It's actually a good question. <laughs> uh, are built on the premise of a token economy, therefore hold the potential to enable self-sustaining game growth. See, this is what I find to be so odd. The premise of a token economy and therefore hold the potential to enable self-sustaining game growth. I don't see how these two things are related. I, I really don't. Yeah, I have no idea. What about NFTs that have uh, unique properties like allowing you to access art shows or showrooms in real life? Like the artist gives them access whenever they have the NFT as a code, which you give access or something like that. Do you mean like whenever you buy a concert ticket? And then you print it out and you go and they scan the ticket. Bro, what? Oh my God. NFTs are the future. They can make them into tickets. It's just unbelievable. Absolutely unbelievable. Everything will be NFT. Yeah, sure. As I said, I, I've, I've made this clear before. I think that the idea of it is, is interesting. Uh, however, what's produced with it is not. It's kind of like the idea of a printer is amazing. Like, oh, wow, you can print something out. You don't need to have a printing press anymore. It's just a digital printer. But whenever the digital printer prints out a picture of a banana, it's not worth anything. Well, well it was made by this incredible technology. And it's, you know, look at the, 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 the capabilities of this. Oh, my God, amazing technology. Wow, look at this. Like, yeah, that's super cool. But all you have is a sheet of paper with a banana on it. The driver uh, that most enables such self-sustaining game growth is diversity, both in how people engage with interactive content like games and their motivations to do so. Yeah, people engage with it. There, there is a lot of diversity. Uh, there are people that are trying to make money, and then there are trying to be. Then there are people that are trying to make more money by buying the things from the people that are trying to make money and then selling them to people that will buy them for more money because they also want to make money. You understand? Yes, that, that's about it. Scalpers. Yes, they're effectively scalping. That's actually a very good parallel. I never even thought of that. So advances in token economies will add further momentum to this trend of diversification. I see the play to earn concept that has people so excited as a prime example of this. So has people so excited? Do you guys remember the um, that article, that, that bullshit Wowhead article that was written where it was like, oh, people are saying, oh, there's been a lot of talk about this. Uh, this is not true. Where is this? Who asked? Where are these people? Nobody knows. A lot of people has people so excited no, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. All of the feedback for this is negative. All of the actual non-curated by a, um, uh, what do you call it? Non-curated by a corporate entity feedback on this is almost universally negative. And the only people that are positive about it are people that have a picture of an NFT as their profile picture. You know? Come on. I recognize that some people who quote... <laughs> play to have fun is this a is this now a term this is this is now I, i'm so glad now that the gaming industry has turned play to have fun into a term and a subset of people that they're trying to make products for oh i'm sure that's gonna make video games so much better 
Imagine having fun. And who currently formed a major uh, currently formed a majority of players um, have voiced their reservations towards these new trends, and understandably so. However, uh, I believe there will be a certain number of people whose motivation is to play to contribute, by which I mean to help make the game more exciting. This all feels like a uh, an MLM. Well, yeah, it is. Yeah, it, it, it is. But the difference now is instead of your high school friend that fell off and now mows lawns, now it's your, uh, uh, you know, YouTube influencer friend that fell off five years ago and is now starting an NFT line. So it's just online. But don't worry. It's still being peddled by the same losers. That's why you have so many of these uh, content creators and so many of these people who will... Um, that they'll they'll fucking put out a new coin they'll put out a new nft thing right something like this and they'll they'll push it out to all their followers because they're pump and dumping them man it, it they're just they're yeah use the code get this in here like this is that's all there is to it like they're trying to use these things to make money off of their fans make money off of their viewers it's a ponzi scheme exactly that that's pretty much what it is let's see here milf coin remember that that's really cute it sounds funny and kids are stupid enough to buy it i wonder how many kids got an nft for christmas back in the day we used to just, just we, we used to just call that coal but now if your parents get you an nft for christmas i think that's uh that's a little bit better it's sad. All right, let's see here. I believe that there will be a certain number of people whose motivation is to play to contribute. I I find this to be... I've seen what play to contribute does. You know what play to contribute does? It turns other video games into retail World of Warcraft, where everything has a monetary value. All of the things that you accomplish in the game are distilled down into their real world money value. And nothing has any sort of, uh, uh, there is no integrity that is preserved. There is no uh, uniqueness of the individual or the accomplishment. Everything is uh, itemized down to its uh, dollar value, or in this case, its token value. Uh, this is what's happened uh, with World of Warcraft. You mean in any game? No, I don't mean in any game. Because New World, yes, you can buy gold. And in uh, Final Fantasy, yes, you can buy gold. But it's against the rules. So whenever it's not against the rules, everything is turned into a spreadsheet. Everything will be turned into a spreadsheet, and the fun that you have in the game will be calculated. You will be optimizing your fun per hour. Specifically talking about user-generated content, though, not mount drops or whatever user generated content like what you mean like the mods and things that people are making already right now more skins oh good fan art oh that's great like the aq gates opening concept yeah i, I yeah you have to turn in fifty-five thousand nfts in order for the servers to unlock the new raid wow i can't wait for the future of gaming holy shit how can so many people be so stupid? Traditional gaming uh, has offered no more explicit incentives to the latter group of people who are motivated strictly by such inconsistent personal feelings as goodwill and volunteer spirit. This is not even true. People have Patreons for setting up mods all over the place. It, it, yeah, it's just, it's not even true. You had so much of this kind of stuff. Yeah, quest reward as an NFT. What the fuck is this message? This is not a... You have to understand that the reason why you, you have to pick up on this is the reason why so much of this language seems completely disconnected from what makes sense to you as an individual is because it's not for you, the individual. It's for the shareholders. This is a message that should have gone out to the shareholders. This would have sounded great if you owned stock in Square Enix. Absolutely. Because most of the shareholders don't know shit either. Uh, take a look at Sandbox Game. Their whole thing is blockchain, and you can make your own games and sell them to people. It's actually really yikes. So I, I don't know about that. I've, I've never seen that before, which probably goes to show how, how good it is. Gamers, get rid of microtransactions. Devs, oh, you mean you want NFTs? Yeah, there it is. Isn't MMO already a metaverse? Yeah, I think to some degree it is. It depends on how you define it.
And that's what I was saying before about how the idea of a metaverse was being used before. Yeah, people already had Patreons and other ways to monetize what they were doing with their uh, their mods and everything. The fact is not uh, unrelated to the limitations of existing user-generated content. User-generated content has been brought into being solely because individuals desire for self-expression and not because of any explicit incentive existed to reward them for their creative efforts. There's a lot of people who make money off of their mods. Like you could say this, you could use this exact same article and you, this exact same line here in order to define uh, why people make YouTube videos, but everybody knows that's not true. Yeah, there are people that make user generated content for free because they think it's fun. But a lot of people that do it, especially the big ones, do it because they make money off of it somehow or another. I see this as one reason why there haven't been as many major game-changing content that were user-generated as one would expect. How about DayZ? Let's see, we have DayZ. Uh, how about a lot of the Minecraft stuff? Uh, we just got done, yeah, Battle Royale in itself. Uh, how about Dota? Yeah, there's another one, Dota, it's huge. Uh, let's see, what else is this? Uh, all of the add-ons as well. Uh, Auto Battler Chess, uh, Roblox, uh, GTA RP. This is just, again, it's creating a need that does not exist. And also, it, it, it's on a false premise, too. Like, the whole thing, it's it's bullshit to begin with. Counter-Strike started as a Half-Life mod? Oh, I never heard that. Yeah, I, I, I didn't know that, actually. Yep, and these companies want some of that money. That's exactly it. That's actually a really good point, Loco. It's because these companies, they see what happened whenever a user makes great content like this and they make money off of it. And you know what these companies think? They don't think, wow, how can we empower this user to make more money off of the content? They think about how can we take 10%? How can we get 5% of that? Because do you really think that there's not going to be a service fee? Do you really think that there's not going to be a way that they're shaving a little bit off of the top? Well, of course there is, and that's why they're pushing it. However, with advances in token economies, users will be provided with explicit incentives, thereby resulting in not only greater consistency in their motivation, but also creating a tangible upside to their creative efforts. Uh, I believe that this will lead more people to devoting themselves to such efforts and to greater possibilities of games growing in exciting ways. Great, so they're basically creating fake currencies for people to get happy about being paid inside of. Uh, that's amazing, I'm so happy about that. From having uh, fun uh, to earning and contributing, a wide variety of motivations will inspire people to engage with games and connect with one another. It is blockchain-based tokens that will enable this. Well then, if it's, if it's only enabled by blockchain-based tokens, then how is it hap- It was happening before, how, why, why do we need this? Why? Is this January 1st or April 1st? I wish it was April 1st. Tomcat. Tomcat's actually a great example in chat. Tomcat's made a, uh, a great add-on for World of Warcraft. I've used it for years now. Uh, it's Tomcat Tours. Do you make money with your add-on, like through uh, a Patreon or donations or something like that? Uh, do, do, you, do you need NFTs? Do you need to be paid in NFTs now? Do you want to be paid in pictures of monkeys? Maybe we can pay you in pictures of monkeys from now on. I'm probably going to face bankruptcy soon, to be honest. Well, I don't blame you, man. You're working your ass off on the game, and the game's fucking dying. You probably should do something different. Honestly, I, I, I don't blame you. Yeah, uh, I, I hope you can get your shit together, man. It, it sucks. Uh, it actually fucking sucks. Well, I mean, WoW, WoW's losing people. There's people like the Deadly Boss mods had the same thing happen. But again, like the reason why that's happening to him, I, I want to explain why it's happening to him. The reason why it's happening is because you need an economy uh, this big in order to support uh, somebody like Tomcat's Tours or somebody like Deadly Boss Mods, right? So you need it to be this big. But whenever the economy gets smaller because the game loses relevancy, which is what will happen with these games too, it always does, then whenever it gets smaller, those people can no longer exist in the space anymore because they can't rely on the every one in a thousand people will give them a dollar because there's only 5,000 people and they're only getting $5. You see what I'm saying? Because he doesn't get paid. Yeah, and he wouldn't get paid with this either because the entire way that he's getting paid is through skimming it off of the top from some people that choose to donate and choose to support. You understand? And so whenever you have less people, uh, uh, yeah, well, uh, wow, I, I was fishing and there's five fish in the lake. I didn't get any fish. But whenever I fished in the lake with 500 fish, I got two fish. 
No shit! Because there's more fish! You understand? Bring money into video games makes it a job and not a game. Yeah. Yeah, I, that's pretty much what it does. And it will also, uh, as I said, it, it will itemize every everything that happens in a game and it will remove any innocence or uh, escapism from the games. Uh, that's what it will do. How much would an NFT fish be worth? Probably more than the real ones. By designing uh, viable token economies into our games, we will enable self-sustaining game growth. It is precisely this type of ecosystem that lies at the heart of what I refer to as decentralized gaming. And, and I hope that this becomes a major trend in gaming going forward. If we refer to the one-way relationships where game players and game providers are linked by games that are finished products as centralized gaming and contrast it to decentralized gaming, then incorporating decentralized games into our portfolio in addition to centralized games will be a major strategic theme uh, starting for us in 2022. Yeah, I, I think this is like kind of an idea that they were trying to do with like Hytale and a few other games too um i'm not really sure how far this is going to go uh personally i don't think it's going to be that far and, and i think that yes these are these are buzzwords used to create uh the illusion that this is the future yeah that that's basically it these are buzzwords used to create the illusion that this is the future and um what happens here and I, i'm gonna read I'm, I'm gonna read the whole thing and then i want to talk a little bit more about this okay like that's not decentralized all it means is that square enix uh, will be making shittier video game shittier video games and letting modders make it better and the companies will reap the rewards yes uh that's effectively what's going to happen to an extent that's what's going to happen yes Basic and elemental technologies that enable blockchain games already exist, and there's been an increase in the societal literacy and acceptance of crypto assets in the past few years. We will be keeping a close eye on societal shifts in the space while listening to many groups uh, of users that populate it, uh, and ramp up our efforts to develop business accordingly with an eye to potentially issuing our own tokens in the future. You know, I saw what you could do with these things. There it is. They're the Crystal Brave tokens, yeah. Um, <laughs> tombstones, but they're real. Uh, back in 2012, a lot of people might look at my original, at my original going offline screen, or my offline screen for my, uh, my main channel, my Asmogold channel on Twitch. And you'll see down there, youtube.com slash virtual exchange. And do you know why I wanted to do virtual exchange? You know why I had that name? It's because back in 2012, I wanted to make my own cryptocurrency trading website where I could do exactly this, where I could shave money off of the top for transaction fees and I could provide a hub for people to do these things. And do you know why I wanted to do that? It's because I knew how easily I could take advantage of people because I was a scam artist for the entire beginning of my adult life. And now I only scam people out of subs whenever I don't stream on my main channel. To be honest, I'd probably be very rich if I had done that. Which is actually not true because the chances are I'd probably be in jail. I saw this 10 years ago. Uh, I, that's why I made the website. Uh, scamming people was my only really one, was my only one true passion in life. Uh, besides jerking off. And it's what I would wake up in the morning and think about. How can I scam people? How can I take advantage of them? How can I get them to give me money for doing nothing? And you know how I thought about doing it was making a virtual exchange. And here we are 10 years later with all of these companies finally figuring it out. Our lifestyles have changed and we're learning to coexist with COVID-19. Against that backdrop, I believe that the new technologies and concepts that I've discussed and the changes that they bring to our business environment will provide us with numerous opportunities to enrich, uh, enrich the shareholders' value through digital entertainment, which is at the core of our business. Uh, this, at the same time, means that we are seeing the beginnings of further leaps towards our business. We remain connected. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. As I said, the true American dream the true thing that almost everybody nowadays growing up in the Western world wants to believe and wants to have happen to them is they want to be the person that doesn't work hard and get rich. They want to be the person that gets rich because they're smarter than everybody else. 
And so all of these companies and all of these people sell people on the fantasy that you're smarter than everybody else. You're going to be the person in 10 years that's on a yacht with cocaine and hookers swimming around and sailing to the different islands in the Caribbean because you were smart enough to invest in their own tokens 10 years ago. This is a fantasy that's being traded for people and they're giving their real money for it. If you can give somebody a fantasy and you can tell somebody how something will change their life and not only change their life, but elevate them among their peers, that's something that has more value. That fantasy has more value than any reality because a fantasy can always be bigger and better and more extravagant than real life. And that's what this thing does is it sells people on a fantasy. It sells people on an idea. But we've already had this idea. We've already had this fantasy before. We've seen what WoW tokens do to an economy. We've seen how the real money auction house affected Diablo 3. This isn't some kind of grand new experiment. This is something that's already had many, many use cases before, and it hasn't improved the player experience at all. This is something that doesn't help the individual. This is something that doesn't help the average gamer, the average player, just your average Joe who comes home to just enjoy video games. This is something that helps the companies and it's something that helps people allow themselves to be taken advantage of for cents on a dollar and allows them to effectively pay people slave labor wages in order to do work and make their own games better while they make billions of dollars off of your back. You're the sweatshop now. <sighs> No more media tours for you? Oh, fuck that. I bet half of the people in the fucking Final Fantasy game agree with me. I bet they agree with me. I bet probably... I bet... I bet you... you so, I don't know how to say this guy's name. I, I bet this guy agrees with me. He's like, ah, fuck, he got us. Ah, damn. He got us. He's like, yeah, it's probably true. But, you know, uh, we can make a lot of money off... I, I bet, yeah, I bet he gets it. He's not stupid. He's a fucking president. He's not dumb at all. He knows what he's doing. So you're mad that they're uh, they're doing a business practice that others cannot. It's called capitalism. Everyone in the chat would do the same if they had the chance. You're not in reality. You're in your own bubble. Okay, we have the NFT Andy made another comment. You're absolutely right. Um, you are absolutely right. There are a lot of people who, if given the chance, uh, if you had to push a button and it would kill somebody on the other side of the world but would give you a million dollars, how many of you would push the button? I would argue to say 95%. Just because somebody would do something if they were in a situation doesn't mean that they should, and it also doesn't mean that they won't. There are a lot of bad things that people would do if given the right circumstances, and the way that you prevent that is through laws and regulations that make those circumstances impossible. And what I'm seeing here is that these laws and regulations are not catching up and are not keeping up with technology. And let's be honest, we're still using DMCA from 1998. The uh, politicians and the Congress and the president, these people are too fucking stupid to even know how the internet works in the first place, much less they can't understand Web 1. How the fuck are they going to understand Web 3? They've got no idea. These technology companies are running circles around them. These people can't even use their fucking email. They're so far behind. And the people that lose out on it are us. Putting out a, a word salad buzzword statement so not fully understanding the future is par for Square Enix. Well, it's fine. I mean, as long as the game's good, I don't really give a fuck about, like, if it's the token thing, I don't really give a fuck. It's not going to go anywhere. It doesn't matter, right? Oh, I think it's funny. Like, I'm, I'm mainly entertained by pointing out their folly. It's not that it's even something that's upsetting me that much. We alternate between 80-year-old presidents. Yeah. Um, you either have a president that fucking... Uh, I, 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 I'm not going to get into politics. You know what? Let's not even get it. It has nothing to do with it. This is a problem for everybody, and it's a huge issue. Okay, let's just say that. Uh, corruption this year has increased dramatically, uh, drastically because the government is, uh, is referring uh, properly. Corruption is going to just get worse and worse because the... Uh, awareness gap between the government and regulations is becoming larger and larger and larger. And on top of that, the people are being more easily controlled by social issues and it allows them to create misdirection through social issues. And what they do is they say, oh, wow, look at this really bad thing that happened. And then everybody's thinking about this really bad thing that happened. And they're not thinking about the other 500 bad things that the companies are doing. They've got everybody fighting with each other, not seeing that this is happening. Special interest groups. Yes, exactly. 
dismantle corporations? No. You just need to have a governmental agency, a governmental apparatus that is competent. Corporations are not fundamentally bad, but they will get there. Anything is bad if you don't give it control. It doesn't matter what it is. Uh, anything is bad in excess. You have too much water, you fucking drown. You don't have enough, you're dead. There's a million food. If you eat too much food, you're gonna get fat and die. But if you don't eat enough, you're gonna, you're, you're gonna die too. You see what I'm saying? There are a lot of things that are good in moderation. Many things are good in moderation. Most things, I would say, are good in moderation. The problem is that the government is supposed to create that moderation and they haven't been doing their job. I can see people, you know what, I see this happening. You know, what, what is the practical outcome of this? The practical outcome of this is people playing these video games in order to create content for these multi-billion dollar companies getting paid on these tokens that are worth less than tickets at Chuck E. Cheese. That's what I think it's gonna be. Uh, why is it up to the government to create moderation? Because they have the guns. They can shoot people if they say no. What do you mean? That's why the pen is mightier than the sword. <laughs> yeah, that's spoken by somebody that hasn't needed to use a sword. Who asked that? I think that there are people who are uh, anarcho-capitalists, right? Who think that, uh, y you know, if you have no government, that the um, there will be no monopolies because uh, fair trade and uh, free trade and these types of things will just work themselves out, right? And um, this doesn't happen. Uh, how many of you guys live in a place where there's only one ISP? How many of you guys li live in a place where there's only one ISP? Me? <laughs> How's your service? How's the pricing? Not too good, is it? It's shit. Why would you possibly want to compete with another person? So this is like, I learned this in business school. One of my only good professors said a price war doesn't help anybody. And he's right, if you don't count the consumer. And that's how they think. So back in Siege of Orgamar, every single time that a new guild would clear Mythic Garrosh, Heroic Garrosh at the time, I would message them. Congratulations, man. I'm glad to see you guys have finally made uh, have finally made it and you've cleared the raid. Uh, we usually sell the mount for 800,000 gold and we were hoping that you guys would be willing to uh, to sit at that price too. And we never had anybody say no. Price fixing? Of course. My dad whenever I was a kid at Blazer Laser Tag, anybody who lives in Austin, he sat next to me in the waiting room while they were explaining all the rules. And there was a, a, a sheet right there. It was a big board or a, a, a poster. And it had all of the things not to do. My dad points over at that board. He says, you see that, Zach? I said, yep. He said, those are all the things you got to do to win. I won. There's a reason they made that shit illegal. is because it's really fucking effective. <laughs> yeah, it's because it is really, really fucking effective, man. Uh, they let me press the big button in the laser tag room. I'm not trying to brag or anything. Yeah, like, cover your thing, kneel down, like, everything, man. I always win. Because I cheat. That's what happens. And if you, if you can cheat, if you can cheat, everybody's gonna cheat. That's the way it goes. Cheating to win a game is what makes the win meaningless. <laughs> that sounds like somebody that didn't win. And that's why you need to have actual rules and you need to have accountability. And again, I think that this is again, selling a fantasy to naive people who believe that they can have a future in a world that doesn't exist. It's an old quote from George Carlin. They call it the American dream because you have to be asleep to believe it. And this here is the new American dream. <sighs> Wake up boys, you're being fucked. I've uh, pretty much said all I have to say.